Good evening. Good Wednesday evening, Birchwood Baptist family. As we continue our study on types tonight, you can turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 37. It's actually about 10 chapters. Obviously, we'll go through these quickly. You know the story well of Joseph, the son of Jacob. And so we're going to go through and compare some of the ways that maybe Joseph and Jesus are similar and how Joseph was a type or a foreshadowing of Jesus to come. We also know that Joseph was a deliverer. He delivered his family, delivered actually the whole known world at that time, but especially Egypt and uh, what would be the nation of Israel from the famine. And so he's a great deliverer as well uh, as Moses in the Old Testament. And so that certainly in, it, in and of itself is a picture of Jesus. And it's exciting to look at these foreshadowings. There's so many ways about Joseph in these 10 or 11 chapters. There's so many ways that Joseph relates and pictures uh, Jesus that we, we just don't have time to go over them all tonight. But I'm going to hit a few highlights and then let you go back and fill in the gaps. Maybe you might find some that I didn't bring up. If you would like to put that in the comments section, I'd love to see that. Uh, because there's there's several. I'm, I'm just basically going to hit a few compared to what are really there. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, and um, we'll um, look at Joseph, a type of Christ or a picture of Christ. Remember, a type is a picture of Christ to come. It doesn't mean he that's him. It's he's just a picture of it. And then we see the anti-type generally in the New Testament, the fulfillment of the type. In this case, obviously, of Jesus. So first of all, we see that Joseph was beloved by his father, as well as Jesus was beloved of his father. Uh, we see in verse chapter 37, uh, verse 2, Joseph was 17 years of age while pasturing the, pasturing the flock with his brothers while he was still a youth, looking along with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wife, and Joseph brought a bad report to them about this, uh, about them to their father. They were troublesome, these boys, these older brothers. Uh, verse 3 says, Now Israel, or Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his sons because he was the son of his old age. And so um, Joseph was the son of Jacob's old age. And of course, God's called the ancient of days, right? Uh, so we see here that he was beloved of the Son. Well, we know at Jesus' baptism, uh, he come up out of the water and the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And God said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So we see that he is a um, type of Christ in that way. Uh, Joseph was sent out to his brethren. Uh, we've seen here that that happened one time and then later it happens again. Um, that he was sent out and uh, to check on his brethren when they didn't hear from him, and, uh, when Jacob didn't hear from them. And so uh, that doesn't go so well. They, they sell him into slavery. And so we know that he went to his brethren. Well, John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might through him might be saved. So God sent his son into the world so that we might be saved. So there's another way that Joseph is that type. Next, Joseph's brethren refused to receive him. So he went to uh, went out to see them. This is in verses 17 and 18 of the same chapter, verse thir chapter 37. Um, it says, the man said, they have moved from here. Uh, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. And when they saw him from a distance and before he came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. Well, obviously Reuben wouldn't let them do that, but they were going to put him to death. And so they didn't receive him too well, did they? They didn't like Joseph. He had told them about their dream, about his dreams and how they would bow down to him. So he came into his own about Jesus, he came into his own, and his own received him not. Could be said about both Joseph and Jesus, so there's obviously one, another way there. Um, so that's that's interesting. Uh, Joseph, in this time, was 
Instead of killing him, they sold him to slavery. They sold him. Well, Jesus was sold also uh, by th with 30 pieces of silver. So there's another similarity. Um, just the selling, both of them were sold. Uh, Joseph was sold as a slave and to a man named the Potiphar, was one of the chief officials uh, there in Egypt, uh, the Potiphar. And um, so he, he went to the Potiphar's house and rose to um, prominence there, was one of the leading slaves uh, in uh, the Potiphar's house. And so, um, but something bad happened. This goes over to chapter 39. So we're going to skip a little bit here. Chapter 39. I'm going to read verses 6 through 8. It says, so he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge, speaking of the Potiphar. And with him there, he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. So he trusted, he trusted Joseph with everything. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. What's that got to do with anything? Well, you're about to find out. It came about after these events that his master's wife, in other words, the Potiphar's wife, looked with desire at Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Verse 8 says, but he refused and said to his master's wife, behold, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in the, in the house and has put me charge, put all that he has or all that he owns in my charge. And so we see two things here. One, he, they were falsely accused, both Jesus and uh, Joseph. Joseph was falsely accused here by the Potiphar's wife and was actually went ahead and was condemned for this and cast into prison. Jesus was falsely accused by the Pharisees. They knew it, and um, yet he was condemned to death. And so that's that's another uh, way here um, that they did that. They both uh, fled from temptation or walked away from temptations. Another way we see in this picture here that Joseph didn't give in to the temptation. Uh, from the Potiphar's wife, and neither did Jesus give in to temptation his whole life. Joseph can't say that, but Jesus can, and he uh, did not give in to temptation. Um, he is tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. And so um, just one way, and one other way that they were, uh, that Joseph is a picture of Christ. Uh, one way, and this is a little bit of a stretch with the definition, but Joseph was buried in the in the prison, obviously Jesus buried in the tomb. Um, Joseph was resurrected from prison and was exalted to set with Pharaoh because he interpreted dreams. Um, and so Jesus also uh, was uh, resurrected, not from prison, but from the grave uh, and set with the father up on high, uh, a bigger king than the Pharaoh. And, um, while on the throne, Joseph was made second in charge. And while on the throne, he was made dispenser of the food or the bread. And of course, we know that Jesus is the, the bread of life. Um, he is our provider, our sustainer. Um, Joseph went on to take a Gentile bride. Praise God, so did Jesus. The church is the bride of Christ, made up mostly of Gentiles. Uh, Joseph made himself known to his brethren the second time they come into him, um, not made him known. And so Jesus will be recognized um, by the Jews. In fact, with everybody, when he comes again, it says that every eye shall behold him. And so there's one more way. After Joseph's revelation of himself uh, to his brethren, they go forth to proclaim that he is alive and the Savior of the world. This is in 45. Um, not necessarily Savior. I probably uh, exaggerated a little bit there. But verse 45, or chapter, chapter 45, uh, verse 26 says that they said to Joseph, or to, to Jacob, excuse me, uh, Joseph is still alive and he indeed is ruler all the, over all the land of Egypt. Um, and so... Uh, we know that uh, Jesus is the Savior of the world, not just the land of Egypt, not just the land of Israel, but all over the whole world. Um, one day he will redeem um, those who believe in him. He will also redeem the land, the nations, uh, the Bible tells us. 
And one last way, and uh, obviously uh, one of the big ways, um, we see Joseph told his brothers when uh, he revealed to them who he was, he said, don't feel bad about this, don't grieve yourself over this, for what you have meant for evil, God meant for good. Jesus hung on the cross and he said the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And in that we can see what the Jews and what the Romans, what the high priest, what uh, Caiaphas, what um, Pilate, uh, what all these men meant for evil by killing Jesus, by killing the Messiah, the promised one, what they meant for evil, God meant for good. By, by killing him, God saved the world. Scripture teaches us that Jesus said while he was here that no man takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. So in a sense, Jesus walked to the cross willingly, um, knowing what was happening, knowing why. Remember when he was in the garden, he said, um, Father, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. And so he went to the cross willingly, but that does not absolve those men from the murder that they committed. Now we learn in the book of Acts that many of the priests, maybe even some of them involved in this, we don't know. Many of the priests come to know Jesus as their savior and believe in Jesus as the Messiah. So we'd see that God used this greatly and he would tell his disciples to take the gospel uh, to Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Sometimes we think somewhere in Africa is the uttermost parts of the earth. The United States of America is the uttermost parts of the earth. It's about as far away uh, from Israel as we could get. And the gospel has made it here. And then we have distributed as a nation, as Christians in this nation, have distributed the gospel back to to the uttermost parts of the earth, other places. And so Joseph, as he saves his people, and they are established in the land of Goshen, we too have a place prepared for us. And if we believe that gospel, then we have a home that is being prepared for us. Uh, John 14 um, says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. And I love that. that God is, Jesus is preparing a place for us. That, isn't that great? Preparing a place for you and me because he wants us to be with him. Thomas in that passage in John 14, Thomas being Thomas, a um, little confused about what Jesus has said. And he said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. And that's where the comparisons stop with any Old Testament, New Testament, modern time man of God. They may be godly, but there's no comparison to them and Jesus in this regard. Jesus is the only way. There's on, the only one way to salvation, and that's through the blood of Jesus. He's the only one that qualified for the spotless Lamb of God. So thank you, God, for sending your son to die for us. Have a good evening, folks. We love you. Continue to pray for you. Pray for us. Can't wait till Sunday. See what the Lord has in store for us. God bless.